Hi, I'm Sammy Sadler, an applications engineer at Instron. Today we're going to talk about preload, slack correction, and how to determine which is best for your testing needs. Preload and slack correction are a method to uh, remove the slack between your to remove the slack of your specimens. As shown in this graph, this is a typical curve you would see where the slack has not been removed. At the beginning of the curve, you see a region in which the force does not increase. Once the specimen then becomes taut, the, uh, the load will then increase. So what is a preload? Preload is a zone in the test in which the crosshead will move to a desired measurement value to remove that slack. In this point in the test, the, there is no data that's being collected. If we go back into Blue Hill Universal, within the method tab, we can uh, turn on our preload. Once the crosshead moves to the desired measurement value, we're also able to use an auto balance that will automatically zero out the strain value. After our system auto balances, our system will then begin collecting data. When do you use a preload? It's very common to start a majority of tests with a preload, but the best time to use a preload is when you're using a measuring device such as an exensometer. When using an exensometer, it's important to utilize the auto balance feature. Without this, it'll most likely result in negative strain values, which, which does not allow for repeatable results. Another common use of the preload is when you're in a quality control environment. So how do you know which preload is right for you? Materials will have varying preloads. So the general rule is to use one fourth to one half the preloading rate sorry, the testing rate for your preloading rate. And then to a value of 1 100th to 1 50th of the maximum load. Most specimens require at least one Newton of load to become completely taut. If your specimen cannot do this, such as a specimen that has a maximum load of 10 Newtons, it may be best to use slack correction. If we look at these curves, we can see the curve on the left has a lot of slack. To ensure that you're using an appropriate preload, the initial slope of the graph will have minimal to no slack without any inflection points. These inflection points will not include yielding or any other specimen properties. So now that we've talked about preload, what is slack correction? Slack correction is typically used in the place of a preload. Slack correction is a calculation that is used to compensate for any slack within the specimen. The difference between a preload and a slack correction is that the slack correction can be used after the test has already been complete. So why do we use it? Slack correction is typically used when a preload is not used or deemed insufficient, such as a material with a maximum load of 10 newtons. This way, we don't have to risk losing any of our data. Another, way, another time to use um, our slack correction is when we have an unknown maximum load or the material has variable loads within that uh, material. So this would include single strand fibers, elastomers, or component level samples. Now let's jump back into Blue Hill Universal. So here we see four different specimens. These have not had a preload. As you can see at the beginning of the graph, there is a section in which the force does not increase. This is a perfect time to use the slack correction calculation. By doing this, we go into our method tab under calculations. As you can see, there are four different types of calculations in our slack correction. Automatic and measurement value are our two most commonly used. Automatic will automatically adjust your curve. This is a good time to point out that the curve will not adjust unless if you're using the tensile displacement. All right, so now that we can uh, see the slack correction, we see that the starting of our test is beginning at a maximum load of 1.5 kilonewtons. So this is unideal because we're uh, not seeing the beginning of our curve. So now we would go back into our method tab to update the type of test we're using. 
The measurement value calculation is the most commonly used calculation at the Inchon Application Lab. This way you're um, able to use a searching measurement such as force. By updating this to two kilonewtons of force, we're able to see an adjustment in our curve while allowing us to see our entire curve, but uh, also reducing the slack within the specimen. As mentioned earlier, it's very important to use an x-axis of tensile displacement. As we saw earlier, with the displacement as the x-axis, the um, graph does not update with the slack correction calculation. Another thing to notice is that our results section does not have, oops. <laughs> so our results section is uh, not updated unless if we toggle on our correct gauge length. So now that we do that, our results section will update using the new gauge length after the slack correction has been implemented. So now that we've seen preload and slack correction, let's open, let's look at the, some frequently asked questions. Can you use preload with a slack correction? Yes, you can. As mentioned earlier, it's best to use um, a preload only for specimens that have the ability to reach a preload value of one Newton and also um, material that is used that has relatively the same maximum force. And then for slack correction, it's used for materials that are either very fragile or very variable within the results. So it's more common to use one or the other. Is it recommended for a preload, um, to use a preload for compression testing? Yes, definitely. So with both uh, compression test and flex testing, uh, with using a preload, you're able to allow, um, place the specimen within the testing system uh, in between the fixtures and then having that um, area between the specimen and the upper fixture. So you're able to have a little bit of room before the test begins. So that's all our time today. Thank you so much for watching and please stay tuned for our Enstron live schedule.